everybody. I am going to read a story today. This is Elf. Maybe some of you have seen this movie before, but I love this book. The pictures are great and um, it's just a good story. So here we go. This is based on the film and the film was written by David Berenbaum and this was illustrated by Kim Smith. <clears throat> This is a story of how Buddy the Elf saved Christmas. It's a story that begins many years ago. One Christmas Eve, Santa Claus slid down the chimney of an orphanage with his sack full of toys. While he was eating some cookies the children had left out for him, a little baby crawled into his sack. On Christmas morning, Santa and his elves were celebrating another successful year of gift giving when they heard a strange noise coming from the toy sack. It was a baby. One of the older elves adopted the baby and named him Buddy. You see his diaper right there, it says Buddy on it. Although Buddy grew twice as fast, he was no different from the other elf children and he had more Christmas spirit than anyone. The Code of the Elves, treat every day like Christmas, there's room for everyone on the nice list, and the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. But it wasn't always easy being a human in an elf's world. Buddy could never make toys as fast as the other elves could. I'm the worst toy maker in the world. I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. You're not a cotton-headed ninny muggins. You're just special. Buddy did his best to fit in, but Papa Elf knew that he had to tell Buddy the truth. Papa Elf told the story of how Buddy had come to the North Pole as a baby. His human father, Walter, never knew that Buddy was born. Walter lived in a magical place called New York City with his family. But that wasn't all. Santa had one more surprising thing to tell Buddy. Your father, he's on the naughty list. No! Your, your father, well, some people just lose sight of what's important in life, Santa explained. That doesn't mean he can't find his way again. Maybe he needs a little Christmas spirit. Buddy was determined to bring Christmas cheer to his father and to all of New York City if he could. Buddy said goodbye to Santa the elves and Papa Elf. He knew they would always be there for him. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Buddy traveled through the seven levels of the candy cane forest, past the sea of swirly, twirly gumdrops, and then he walked through the Lincoln Tunnel. See him there? Buddy quickly learned that New York City was a magical place. He made new friends, got his shoes shined, and ran circles through a revolving door. He also played hopscotch on the crosswalk. Finally, Buddy went to see his father, who worked in an office in the Empire State Building. But Buddy's dad didn't want to see him. He didn't believe that Buddy was his son or an elf, and he ordered him to leave. Buddy was beginning to understand why Walter was on the naughty list. Buddy left feeling discouraged, but then he saw something that made him smile. A big store, all decked out in Christmas. Inside, a girl named Jovi was decorating a Christmas tree. Buddy was glad to meet another human who shared his appreciation for elf culture. Jovi told him that Santa would be visiting the store the next day. Buddy was so excited to see Santa again. Buddy stayed up all night decorating the store in preparation for Santa's arrival. But when Santa arrived the next morning, Buddy realized that he was an imposter. You smell like beef and cheese. You're not the real Santa. You sit on a throne of lies. Buddy ripped off the fake Santa's beard and all the children screamed. He caused such a ruckus that the store manager called Buddy's dad to pick him up. Buddy met his dad's wife, Emily, and their son, Michael. They were much friendlier than Walter, his dad. At dinner, Buddy told his family about the four main food groups the elves eat, candy, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. Buddy had a whole list of things that he wanted to do with his dad. Make snow angels for two hours, go ice skating, 
eat a whole roll of cookie dough as fast as we can, and snuggle. But Buddy's dad didn't want to do any of those things. All he wanted to do was work. So Buddy went to work with his dad. He tried coffee. He helped answer the phones. Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? And he sorted packages in the shiny mailroom. Buddy hadn't forgotten about Jovi, the girl from the store. On Christmas Eve, they skipped down the sidewalk together. He showed her a sparkly Christmas tree in a shop window. And Jovi showed Buddy the biggest tree in all of New York City. Buddy was so excited that he interrupted a big meeting at his dad's office to tell him all about Jovi. I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows it. But Buddy's dad did not want to be interrupted. Get out! Buddy was so upset that he decided to run away. He left a note behind. I'm sorry I ruined your lives and <laughs> crammed 11 cookies into the VCR. I don't belong here. I don't belong anywhere. I'll never forget you. Love, Buddy. When Michael told his dad that Buddy was missing, Walter felt sorry for yelling at him. He knew what he had to do. Walter's boss didn't want him to leave the meeting, but Walter said that nothing was more important than finding his son. Buddy was on his way out of the city, but then he saw something strange overhead. It was Santa's sleigh, and it was falling from the sky. Buddy found Santa in Central Park. My sleigh can't fly without Christmas spirit, and there's no Christmas spirit anymore, Santa explained. I need an elf's help. But Santa, I'm not an elf. Buddy, you're more of an elf than anyone I've ever met. Suddenly, Walter and Michael burst through the trees. They had been looking for Buddy all night long. Buddy, I need to apologize to you, Walter said. You've been right about everything, and I don't want you to leave. You're my son, and I love you. I love you too, Dad. While Buddy helped Santa fix the sleigh, Walter and Michael joined Emily and Jovi in the crowd outside Central Park. They needed to help people find their Christmas spirit. Jovi remembered something that Buddy had told her. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. One by one, everyone began to sing. It's working, Buddy exclaimed. Everyone except for Walter. Dad, you have to sing. Finally, Walter joined in. Santa Claus is coming to town. And just in the nick of time, Santa's sleigh soared into the sky. There was so much Christmas spirit in the air that the sleigh flew all the way to the top of the Empire State Building. The next day was Christmas. It was the best Christmas ever because Buddy got to spend it with his whole family doing all of his favorite things, singing, giving gifts, and snuggling. And that's the story of how, with a little help, Buddy the Elf managed to save Christmas and his spirit saved a lot of other people too. The end. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.